It's been a couple of years since we last looked at power meters of the Pro Peloton back in Dubai, but since almost all of the World Tour teams are present here in Abu Dhabi, we thought we would do an update. Also, because there's quite a few changes. One of the few teams who are still using SRM power cranks are Team Bahrain Merida. Uh, when we checked in last year for a tech tour at Dubai, they were having the THM crank cars, but they've changed this year to look. Now these are a recent collaboration with SRM and the unique things about these cranks is that they have tri-lobe technology. And what that means is that you can have three different crank lengths with the same cranks, so 170, 172.5, and 175. And they've also got the SRM PC8 head unit in a rather bling gold colour which fits with the theme uh, of the team. Now it's been quite a slow and steady shift over the last decade or two from pretty much all riders choosing SRM to other power means companies. And I think part of the reason for that was that a lot of pros I know firsthand didn't actually trust the data or indeed the durability of some of the new power meter products. However, there are so many brands now that have done a lot to ensure that durability and accuracy and so now we're seeing lots of different power meters on the pro riders bikes and that's kind of good news for the rest of us really because now the prices are beginning to get a bit more reasonable. The other teams that are still using SRM power meters are Lotto Sudal here who have them mounted to their Campagnolo Super Record chain sets and then the only other World Tour team who are entirely using SRM power meters is the French squad AG2R on their factor bikes and they're using the same cranks as Bahrain Merida uh, which are those look carbon cranks. There's been a slight change at the Bora Hansgrohe team, not in terms of the power meters that they are using because they are still 4i, despite this specialised badge, and I shall be going into more detail about that a little bit later on in this video, uh, but rather it is the head unit. Uh, they are one of two teams this year who are using the Wahoo units, which are what we choose to use over at GCN as well. Uh, all the riders appear to be using the Wahoo Element Bolt, and it's not just Bora Hansgrohe, but also over at Katusha. This is the bike, incidentally, of Marcel Cattell, who's a new recruit for the team uh, this year. As you can see, it is a full SRAM equipped bike with the red ETAP group set. And as such, the power meter that they are using is from Quark, who come under the SRAM umbrella. The model is the D0, and that has a claimed accuracy of plus or minus one and a half percent. And the big thing that they say about these cranks is that they have compatibility with almost all bottom bracket standards which there are many. Spanish squad Mobistar are using power to max and this is their NG model uh, which is super accurate plus or minus one percent which really is about as good as it gets for an on-bike power meter. The only time you're going to get better than that if you're in a sports laboratory. At the top they are all running Garmin Edge 1030 head units which is reasonably unusual because normally if a team is running Garmin for example you'll see a range of different models depending on the size that each rider likes to see in front of them but here, they're all using the same one, which does actually look very neat. The biggest recent change to the power meters in the Pro Peloton is the introduction of Shimano's first ever power meter called the RP100P, which you can see here on Team Sunweb's bike. Now, since 15 of the 18 World Tour squads are running Shimano gears, it's not a surprise to see quite a few of them already adopting this model. That said, they are in quite short supply, not just for the general public to purchase them, but also for the teams to use. So Sunweb, for example, are currently using a combination of the Shimano power meter, but also their previous Pioneer sponsor as well. Now, this adds 70 grams to the standard Dura-Ace crank set. It is dual-sided with an accuracy of plus or minus 2%. Although it is only running one battery, uh, the two sides are connected via a wire, which is handy because you've only got one thing to charge then. It's compatible with Bluetooth and ANT+, and what they are linking it to is a brand new computer to the Pro Peloton as well. That is the Sigma ROX 11.0 GPS. That's a new deal for Team Sunweb, which will go through the next few years. Currently though, they are all mounted to the stem as opposed to an out front mount. 
There's a bit of intrigue around Team Quickstep's power meters for 2018 because they've previously been on 4i. Uh, this year, it looks like they're kind of still on 4i, but with specialized branding. This drive side part is unmistakably a 4i power meter. However, the non-drive side looks slightly different to what we've seen from that company before, which makes you think perhaps specialized are thinking of acquiring the company, or maybe they're thinking of making their own power meter because the Global Triathlon Network, our sister channel, recently went to have a look at Vicky Holland's bike, and that looked like a proper specialized crank-based power meter. So it does seem like the big company that is specialized might be the latest to delve into a rather busy power meter market. Meanwhile, the head units that they are using are fairly standard Garmin's. Uh, they've got the K-Edge mounts, which are very popular actually amongst a lot of the World Tour teams here. And again, they have a choice amongst the riders between the different size of head units. Team Sky have been long-term users of Stages power meters, and the vast majority of the riders bikes here in Abu Dhabi are still using that power meter, mainly the dual-sided one. However, their agreement with that company is non-exclusive, and so we have seen a few bikes here from Team Sky riders, such as this one of Sebastian Enau, which are also using the new Shimano RP100P. Up at the top, we have got Garmin head units with the majority of the bikes here using K-Edge mounts. We've got Danny Van Poppel's bike now. He's moved from Team Sky to be with Lotto NL Jumbo for 2018. Uh, they are all using Pioneer power meters and head units. And the reason I've got my phone here is because the names of them are not particularly catchy. Uh, so the crank set, the dual sided one that we have here is the SGY PM 910V pedaling monitor sensor. And then the head unit that we have here at the front is the SGX CA500. Now Pioneer, are the only power meter that measures both force direction and force magnitude, which it does 12 times per revolution. Uh, the accuracy of this power meter is plus or minus 2%, so pretty standard there. Uh, the battery is not rechargeable, but it is a CV2032, which is pretty common, and it lasts for around about 180 hours. Yet another company to have entered the power meter market are FSA, although they've done so in partnership with Power to Max. Uh, this is Miguel Angel Lopez's bike who's riding for Team Astana and they're all using these power box power meters. Uh, plus or minus 2% is the accuracy of these and they say that the battery life is a quite incredible 400 hours. Uh, they've all got them on the K-Force light carbon crank sets but they are available to go on the aluminium crank sets at a much lower price. Uh, here all of the riders are using Garmin head units, some with an out front mount, uh, although Lopez has gone old school. That's the mount there on the stem. Team Dimension Data are the only squad to be using a rotor power meter. Uh, this, as you can very well see, is the bike of Mark Cavendish, and they're all running the rotor twin power model, which measures left and right power independently using four opposed strain gauges. Uh, as well as the strain gauges, inbuilt into this is an accelerometer, which measures angular velocity around 500 times per revolution. And what that means is that if you so wish, you can get some very detailed pedal dynamics analysis and to do that you can link up this power meter via Bluetooth to your smartphone or tablet. There is a rechargeable battery which is located in the spindle and a full charge gives you around about 250 hours of ride time. Uh, this power meter adds about 170 grams to the normal crank weight. Up at the top they're also using Garmin Edge head units. No 1030s on display although I think they do have that as a choice uh, but it's mainly 520s and 820s and then there's a combination of rotors own mounts and also some from Envy. The other team that are using power to max are Team UAE Emirates, and like Mobistar, uh, they are using the NG model on their bikes, combined with a Garmin head unit at the front. We have a combination of power meters here at Team EF Education First Draft Pack presented by Cannondale. Uh, first up on Pierre Roland's bike is the SRM unit mounted onto the Cannondale SI SL2 crank set. These have been around for quite some time, but they've always had a high claimed accuracy of plus or minus 1%, which was the best in the field before power to max came along with their NG model, which equaled it. Uh, and a lot of that they claimed was down to the stiffness of the Cannondale cranks. Uh, meanwhile, a lot of the riders are also using Garmin Vector 3 pedals. It's kind of a 50 50 split over here in Abu Dhabi. Uh, the head units are all Garmin and they're also using Garmin's own mounts. 
on the handlebars. Mitchell and Scott are yet another team who are gradually making the transition from SRM over to Shimano. But again, they haven't quite got their hands on enough to give everybody in the team the new power meter. So a few people are still on the old Durace cranks and an SRM power meter. Up at the top, they too are using Garmin head units. Trek Segafredo are in exactly the same situation as Mitchelton Scott, gradually going over to the Shimano power meter, and they too are using Garmin head units. The mounts for them come from Bondrega themselves, so a rather neat looking thing here on the front of the road stems, and an equally neat one that goes on the top of the time trial bars. Team BMC are a squad who use Shimano group sets and also wheels, so it's not a surprise to see they too have gone over to the Shimano RP100P power meter, although you can still see uh, a few of the older SRMs, like on the time trial bike of Joey Roscoff back there. Uh, with that change of power meters, there's also come a change of head units for Team BMC, who have always been on SRM. Uh, they are now using Garmin. Along with all the World Tour teams, there are also three pro-continental squads here in Abu Dhabi, and the first team we've come to visit is Bardiani. Uh, they are using these power pedals, which are Fivero Asioma, which is an update to their previous model, which were the B-Pro pedals, which we saw a couple of years ago in Dubai. Uh, they have a claimed accuracy of plus or minus 2%, which is up there with the best on-bike power meters. Uh, it's rechargeable via USB, which is handy, and each charge gives a total of around 50 hours of riding time. Slightly easier to fit than the previous model as well which needed a special tool. With these you can just use the standard 8mm Allen kit. And then up front for the head unit that is supplied by Polar which is the M460 model which they released in the middle of last year. The remaining two invited teams here, Novo Nordisk and Gazprom Rusvelo, are both using SRM cranks along with SRM head units. And then there's one World Tour squad who aren't present here in Abu Dhabi, that being the French squad FDJ. They were actually the first team to use Shimano's new power meter last year, and so not a surprise to see them continuing that in 2018. So quite a shift in terms of power meters on pro bikes away from SRM and a lot more diversity in terms of the number of brands present on pro riders bikes. Garmin have long been the dominant factor in the head unit market at the pro level. Although it is interesting to see that the likes of Wahoo and Sigma are starting to sponsor teams as well. So that could be the next big shift over the coming years. Right, if you've enjoyed this video, please give us the thumbs up just down below. If you like your tech, you need to make sure that you subscribe to GCN Tech. You can do that by clicking on the icon on the screen right now. And then if you'd like to see John Canning's report on new tech from the Dubai Tour, you can find that just over here. Noisy motorbikes.